So internet access has become the bedrock for development. And the difference in accessibility of the internet is what makes the difference today between a developed country and uh, a developing country. It is the new inequality. Welcome back to Africa Science Focus, the show that keeps you up to date with the latest innovation in science news. I'm Sally Amutabi. This is the final episode in our energizing Africa mini-series where we look at electricity, infrastructure and network access on the continent. Internet disruptions are an everyday part of life in sub-Saharan Africa. Reporting from Tanzania, Michael Baruti investigates the impact of unreliable internet access. Ah, uh, there it goes again. The internet has dropped off just when I'm on deadline. For many of us in Africa, this happens a lot. And internet outages are often due to infrastructure failures like power cuts. But there are also recent examples of governments deliberately restricting access to the internet as a whole, to social media, or to phone data networks. So what do internet disruption mean for sub-Saharan Africa? I spoke to Karen Dossi, who heads up two organizations that focus on digital inclusion and skill development, the Launchpad Tanzania and Women at Web Tanzania. Right. In 2016, the, the United Nations declared the right to Internet as a basic human right. And the reason being, although it was non-committable in terms of um, a UN resolution, which, you know, nations would choose whether or not to commit. Um, it, it, basically, what they were trying to say is the right to Internet is a basic human right because it, it's very much intertwined with other rights. For example, the right to information, the right to assembly, um, the right to freedom of expression and in essence if offline is supposed to mirror online then people or citizens should be able to exercise all these rights that they have on online platforms and therefore um, the right to internet should be a basic right. I would say um, there's so many factors and limitations that would you know, possibly not make that a reality in most parts of the world. Um, like, for example, in Tanzania, we're, uh, we're yet to achieve 85% internet penetration, as, as cited by, um, you know, the recent president, um, Samia Suluhu, who actually said that it's a target by 2025. She would like to achieve 85% um, internet penetration in Tanzania. So we, we, we are yet to get there, whether or not we, we're actually acknowledging this or aware that the right to internet is a basic right. Um, so this brings me back. This brings me back to my next question. Now, I think we uh, in Tanzania we remember sometimes last year a bit of an internet shut now. What, what, what is the bigger picture here in terms of uh, uh, implication? The most impactful impl implications that I had observed, especially when when it happened during the elections, um, it, it was quite dreadful because that was exactly the same time when. Uh, for example, with us in this space, we were really trying to push for a paradigm shift from offline to online in terms of businesses during COVID-19. Uh, but the biggest implication that I also saw was how it also affects online learning, you know, and the learning environment that we also um, had very much tried to um, navigate from the offline to online because Tanzania, although we didn't have like an official lockdown, we did have a school shutdown. And um, even during that time, the digital divide was quite apparent because it was only the children um, who came from families who could afford to be online and access learning materials through the online platforms, however few there were, um, it was quite apparent that we had left about more than 85% of the learning population who were supposed to continue with learning, even with the shutdown. So imagine this was also during the time of, very much during the time where COVID was, is, and it's still very serious in our country. And you have an internet shutdown, you don't even know like what is happening in the country, if there's an outbreak, however serious it is. I mean, you can't access the international sources with internet shutdown. So the implications were actually quite major. When you, t when you look at it from a socioeconomic spectrum um, but from also a sociocultural spectrum they were quite yeah. quite major do actually people have an understanding of this impact and the implications where do you even speak if if how do you if, even if i'm aware of this implication you've already shut that <laughs> you've already shut down the one platform that 
that I could actually go and speak about this, you know, or speak on this. So what, what, what do you want me to do? So I feel like, again, it was a, it, uh, to speak into uh, human rights, it was a right that was taken away from people. Many of us in Africa will have experienced a deliberate disruption to our internet services. Authorities in more than 30 countries in Africa have obstructed internet access over the past two decades, according to the Global Network Initiative, and some analysts say this trend is increasing. In January, Uganda restricted online access in the run-up to its presidential election. The government said this was necessary for security. Last July, Ethiopia imposed the internet shutdowns that lasted almost a month after the killing of singer and civil rights activist Hachalo Hondesa. And my country, Tanzania, blocked all online access during the October elections. Kara said that the internet disruption had immediate impacts on education, agriculture, and health. Nena Nwakanma, the chief web advocate of the World Wide Web Foundation, tells me more about these repercussions. Internet access is a driver for all economic, social, and human development, and it is also an enabler for other rights. I don't know how someone can complete education today without the access to the internet. I don't even know how you can work as a professional today without access to the internet. And it is a lifesaver. In those days, people used to think it's a luxury. If you are listening to me, I have one question to ask you. Imagine if this pandemic came and we did not have internet connectivity. What would we have been? There would have been millions more dead today how can internet actually boost development in sub-Saharan Africa? Um, if you come down to Africa, I think we haven't reached even 30% that have comfortable internet access. I'd like to pause here to talk about what we call internet access. Being online is like being existent. But in today's world, friends, um, we have come to the age of meaningful access. Meaningful access being at least be able to connect once a day. So um, it is no longer enough to say I have an email and then you visit it once every two weeks. Uh, the question is, do we have development as a priority in Africa? Countries who want to develop their economies, their people uh, must uh, prioritize connectivity. Uh, I still see that in some countries, uh, uh, digital development is is classified as communications. No, it is not communications, it's economics. So while we want to fight against poverty, while we want to fight against inequalities, we, we need to enable people to skill them to be able to make the best of, of their connectivity. What um, can the governments actually do to improve uh, uh, all the things that you've just said? What is the role of the government in all this? You see, it is really very important that all the major stakeholders be part of a decision. That means the media, that means civil society, that means investors, that means multilateral organizations, that means researchers, that means everyday users. We really have to sit around a table and ask ourselves as a country, what do we have? What is our history? What are our resources? How do we want to be part of the digital economy? Um, it is true that every government wants to show power, wants to show sovereignty, but in the case of digital cooperation, all move together as one single cyberspace. There is no point taking yourself out or shutting down the internet to protect yourself. The internet is not yours. It is not a state matter. So it is really very important um, for everyone listening to me to understand that it is not one thing. The internet is not one thing. It is an mm. ecosystem. In fact, it is an evolving ecosystem. So if, if we go from the, from the beginning that access to the internet has become the bedrock for economic, social, and personal development, when you shut down the internet, you are doing, it's not just economic harm, you are doing social harm, uh, like the Democratic Republic of Congo does when it does election, like Ethiopia does when, when exams are up, uh, like uh, Uganda did recently. It's cowardice. I don't have any other word for it. It is tackling a symptom instead of solving a problem. 
why is your election a do or die matter? I would say, if for any reason a government shuts down the internet, that is enough reason to vote against that government because they don't deserve your vote. Michael took to the streets of Dar es Salaam to hear how last year's internet restrictions affected Tanzanians. Are you introducing yourself? So my name is, is Haridi Issa and um, I'm working, uh, I can say, in media production industry. So the internet shutdown happened last year. Yeah. Did it affect you in any how, shape or form? It did. It did a lot. I couldn't access social media. Apart from working directly, I couldn't access any information. Um, I couldn't read emails. So it was, it was very, very bad. Hello, my name is Philip and I work in medical industry in Tanzania. What happened during the internet shutdown in, back in October in 2020 is that we experienced quite a number of effects. One of those was um, um, halted operations, slowdown of operations, without forgetting that this is a medical practice. Therefore, things are needed to be available in real time. So it's slow or sometimes communication is broken down. Meanwhile, we have also had experiences with our procurement processes, for example, purchase of some of our reagents and whatsoever from outside the country. We wish this doesn't happen again, because if it does, it sends us back two to three years backwards instead of using the same internet to push us four to five years ahead. Michael speaking to Haridi and Philip about the October 2020 internet shutdown in Tanzania. That brings us to the end of our Energizing Africa miniseries. We'll have details at the end of the show about how you can catch up on the whole series. Next up, we hear from Joseph Kauzi in our Q&A segment. Hi, my name is Joseph Kauzi from Blungo Del Secondary School. Why is Africa struggling to end climate and weather injustices? Okay, currently, Africa is accountable for roughly 4% of worldwide emanations and historically it has not had any responsibility for the greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. Africa, the continent that has contaminated the slightest, is paying the most noteworthy cost. That's the notion of climate debt, right? Uh, to give you some of the reasons for this struggle. One, ineffective policy structures. The point number two, which is also important to note, is on high dependence on developed countries. Third point is on non-prioritization of climate and weather issues. So African policymakers and governments do not really place much emphasis on climate change and mitigation strategies due to their economic and social pressing needs such as food insecurity, drought, and poverty. The fourth point, which will be my last point to talk about, is on inadequate knowledge on the future effect of climate change. Interesting question, Joseph, and special thanks to our resident expert, Dr. Patrick Boche from Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. If you have a question you want answered, get in touch. Send a voice message via WhatsApp to plus 254-799-042-513 and you too could be featured on Africa Science Focus. For more episodes and to catch the whole Energizing Africa miniseries, visit www.sidev.net or find us on your favorite podcast app. Today's program was produced by Harrison Lewis. The editors were Fiona Broom and Jackie Oparafatoe with reporting from Michael Baruti. Africa Science Focus is produced by SciDevNet and distributed in association with your local radio station. I'm Sally Amutabi. See you again next week. This program was funded by the European Journalism Centre through the European Development Journalism Grant Program with support from the Bill and Melina Gates Foundation.